Well, good evening, sports fans. Welcome in here tonight on audiosportsonline.com. I'm Rob Kendall, going to be joined by Lex Zorn here momentarily as the Cascade Lady Cadets take on the Monrovia Lady Bulldogs. Still got about 12 minutes up on the clock before we begin tonight, and uh, Lex will join us momentarily. The Cascade Lady Cadets enter with a record of 8-2. and two. They won their first six and have gone 2-2 two and two in their last two with uh, wins over Tri-West and Brown County. I'm sorry, wins over Brown County and Edgewood. Losses at uh, against Martinsville and Indianapolis Ritter. The Monrovia Lady Bulldogs come in with a record of 6-6. Six and six. And uh, we bring it now, one of the, uh, well, the guy that'll be doing the play. <laughs> Lex Zornleck, how's it going? Oh, it's great. Thanks, Rob. Um, great to be here as always here in Clayton, my, uh, my home away from home. This is the fifth time that we've been here in the last 11 days. And, you know, it's uh, I've, had, I've had a great time with, with this uh, boys and girls basketball binge and I'm really going to miss it because we're not going to be back here for another week after tonight, so it's it's just not going to seem right. But anyway, uh, Cascade enters, enters this game not only with a record of 8-2, and two, but also ranked number 6 in the state in Class 2A. And they're facing a, an opponent tonight, Monrovia, who's also a Class 2A team. Uh, the Lady Bulldogs have been very good in recent years, winning a sectional championship two of the last three years, including last year. Uh, this year, they're uh, with a relatively young team, um, including a sophomore and a freshman in the starting lineup. They're um, off to a 6-6 six and six start. And uh, believe it or not, even though this is the 11th game of the season for your Lady Cadets, this is only the second time they've played someone in the same class. Coming into tonight, um, six, uh, excuse me, uh, se- seven of Cascade's first 10 opponents were actually class 3a teams and the lady cadets were six and one of those games they've also played a couple of class 4a teams and they split those games and they, they've beaten their only previous uh class 2a opponent meanwhile uh, Cas- uh monrovia has played a much weaker schedule they've played um a couple of 1a teams with they and they're 2 and 0 in both of those games however they played seven 2a teams a four and three in those games, and then they've lost all three of their games against Class 3A opponents. They also have uh, three common opponents on the season. Um, Covenant Christian, who uh, Cascade beat 57-56, but uh, who beat Monrovia 73-23. Then Indian Creek, who Cascade beat 66-57, but beat Monrovia 75-43. And finally, Cardinal Ritter, who just a week ago tonight beat uh, Cascade in overtime 59-57 but who beat um but but Monroe excuse me Cardinal Ritter beat Monrovia 51 uh, 30 so uh Cascade very much better against all three common opponents did Monrovia so on paper this does look like a game that is very winnable for Cascade certainly it, it would be um a great way to um um give the fans a send-off since the Lady Cadets, believe it or not, will not be back here for a solid month. It's hard to believe. This is actually their seventh consecutive game here at Clayton. Their last road game was all the way back on November 15th at Decatur Central. After tonight, they it will be, um, they won't be back here until a month from today. Um, in between this weekend, they're going to be playing back-to-back uh, Friday and Saturday night at Owen Valley, which is going to be a very tough game Owen Valley um, is a Class 3A team that will enter that game with a record of 11-0. and So that's certainly going to be one of the most challenging opponents that Cascade has played all season. And then on Saturday night, uh, the Lady Cadets will visit South Putnam to place the Eagles, uh, who currently have a record of 7-3. and Then uh, the Lady Cadets will play the first week in January in the Hendricks County Tournament down at Plainfield. They will have at, um, uh, their first game will be on Tuesday that week, January the 3rd, and we'll be bringing you all the winner's bracket games here on Audio Sports Online as well as WYRZ FM 98.9. And then after that is over, hopefully they'll, they'll be uh, they'll make it the winner's bracket all the way to the championship game there on Saturday night, but then 
After that, on Tuesday, January 10th, they will play out at Northview, which is in Brazil, Indiana, hometown of Jimmy Hoffa, as well as 80s rocker Henry Lee Summer. That's right. Jimmy Hoffa was from there, wasn't he? Yeah, that's, that's right. And, you know, a couple of years ago, I was commentating an Avon game, and they had a player named Hoffa, and I just jokingly said, huh, you know, I wonder if he's related to Jimmy. And then I later found out that Jimmy Hoffa is actually just from a few miles down the road, so the kid probably is related to Jimmy Hoffa. But anyway... Um, then uh, finally, after that, uh, there will be a on uh, back here at Clayton. There will be a boys girls double header a month from today. That's uh, Friday, January thirteenth. Friday the thirteenth. So hopefully that will be a good luck day for Cascadia. We'll get a, a boys girls double header sweep as we did uh, against Brown County a week ago Saturday night. And uh, so uh, definitely there's a lot of uh, action coming across. Uh, coming at you over the next month, but most will be away from home. Now, there will be a boys game a week from today um, here at Clayton, and but then that will be their last home game until the 13th. So. All right, let's go ahead and thank the sponsors that allow yes. us to be out here tonight, and they include the sports medicine partner for the Cascade Cadets, Hendrix Regional Health, also want to thank the Diamond and Platinum Partners, CJ's Pizza, Platinum Partner, AIC Irrigation, a Platinum Partner, Diamond Partner, North Salem State Bank, and Diamond Partner, Best Way Drywall, Inc. Band in full form tonight, and we welcome those of you in here on audiosportsonline.com as the Cascade Lady Cadets are set to take on the Monrovia Lady Bulldogs. Cascade will be the home team on the scoreboard tonight. They're going to wear the home white jerseys with those blue outline numbers that are occasionally a little tough to read. The Monrovia Bulldogs will be the visitors wearing road green with white letters and numbers. The Lady Bulldogs got the better of the Lady Cadets in the JV game. So uh, certainly Cascade fans hoping for a little bit different outcome here in the varsity contest tonight. But as Lex said, 8-2, uh, and two, great start for the Lady Cadets. Number 6. Uh, in Class 2A, and uh, they're a team that's certainly going to be reckoned with all throughout the rest of the season, and uh, as they hope, certainly, on into the postseason. Again, I want to thank the fine athletic director here at uh, the Cascade High School, Scott Stevens. Also want to thank the outstanding principal, Mr. John Acton. And hey, speaking of John Acton, we're going to have him on the radio tomorrow night on 98.9 WYRZ. He will be one of my guests on Central Indiana Today as uh, we're going to be talking about these fabulous I-Step scores that came down for uh, Cascade. And uh, boys basketball coach Chris Bois from the guidance department as well as Marsha Bright from the guidance department will be with us too talking about the I-Step scores, what they mean for uh, these students, what they mean for the school as a whole. So that's tomorrow night, 7 o'clock, 7 p.m., on 98.9 WYRZ, you can hear that interview, and it does stream live if you're outside of our listening area at WYRZ.org. And QA Cascade is so proud, as they should be, of those really great ISEP scores. Let's meet the starting lineups tonight for your Lady Cadets. Michaela Collier, number zero, a senior, 5'5". Five five. Number 33, Bailey Walker, a senior, 5'10". Number 14, Hannah Rasnake, a junior, 5'11". Number 13, Olivia Bryant, a uh, junior, 5'6". And number 24 is Amelia Bryant, a junior, 5'9". So uh, Walker, Collier, Rasnake, Bryant, and Bryant, your starters for the Lady Cadets. For the visiting Monrovia Lady Bulldogs, number 32 is Michaela Swafford, a sophomore, 5'6". Number 24 is Lindsey Keen, a senior, 5'4". Number 44, Alicia Whitney, a senior, 5'8". Number 12, Madison Payne, a freshman, 5'5". Five five. And number 22 is Allie Grimes, a junior, 5'8". So your starting lineups tonight are uh, Swafford, Keen, Whitney, Payne, and Grimes for the visiting Monrovia Lady Bulldogs. And uh, again, just about uh, three minutes up on the clock now. Both teams back in the locker room, as you can see, though. And here come the uh, the visiting uh, Bulldogs. Pretty short trip. You know, we talked with John Acton today when we taped that interview, and I said, are we going to have a game tonight, Leck? And 
thankfully, I think this uh, short travel time between these two schools really, uh, re- really played a big difference in the in the them having this game tonight. Yeah, that's right. Monrovia is located just 11 miles south of here in neighboring Morgan County, and uh, like most, actually, like all of our um, um, traveling opponent after. Let me start over. Like all of the visiting opponents for Cascade so far this season, they've brought a really nice contingency of fans here, and you know, which is great to see, especially considering this is a Tuesday night. If this were a Friday or Saturday, if this were a Friday or Saturday night game, it might be a little disappointing. But for a Tuesday, this is actually very good. And I was just telling Rob before we went on the air, um, you know, um, there were well over a hundred people here for the JV game. And I've been to, like, I remember a few years ago, I commentated Hamilton Southeastern when they were number one in the state in girls basketball against Penn, who was, like, ranked seventh or eighth or so. Somewhere They were were in the top ten, and there were just almost exactly 100 people there. So it says a lot about the loyalty here and the the zeal of the fans at Cascade that they get, you know, more people for a JV game than, you know, the top-tier program gets for, you know, a varsity game against a marquee opponent. So right now we have both teams here um, warming up. We got the band playing the fight song. It's interesting to look at the starting lineup for tonight. It's a little different. Um, Lexi Gross has not played a lot this season, but she's, you know, really uh, the last game or two really shown a lot of spark off the bench. You know, she's um, the shortest player on the team at 5'2", but she's a relentless competitor. Um, Very good with uh, ball handling and defense. And also um, Trinity Hostetler, who had barely played all season, but uh, provided a nice spark off the bench uh, last Tuesday in the overtime loss to Cardinal Ritter coming off the bench and relieving uh, Bailey Walker, who missed about half of that game with foul trouble. And Hostetler chipped in six points after uh, scoring only two in the entire previous uh, in the entire previous games. And at that, uh, we're uh, about to pause for the national anthem. All right, there you go, our national anthem. And uh, we're going to have our starting lineups for tonight's game. And then high school basketball. And, Leck, it should be a very exciting evening. Yeah, it should. And it's interesting to see the starting lineup changes. Hannah Rasnick, who's the team's third leading scorer at 10.9 points a game, coming off the bench tonight. So she should. That, that, what that does is give the Lady Cadets a spark plug, some instant offense off the bench, which is something that they haven't had a lot of this season, despite playing overall very well. Bailey Walker leads the um, team in almost every category. She's a 5'11 senior. She'll be playing college ball a year from now. She averages 15 points, 15.1 points and 9.3 rebounds a game, as well as 3.3 steals and 2.0 blocks a game. 
Michaela Collier especially has come on strong of late. She's uh, also a senior. Uh, wears number wears number zero, uh, five five, and averages um, thirteen point nine points as well as two point one steals a game. The team's uh, leading, um, the uh, the team's fourth leading scorer, Olivia Bryant, averages ten point three points as well as a team high four point two assists a game. She's a five six junior. So, it, you know, we'll see how the um, starting lineup changes work out. You know, we're about halfway through the regular season here. And we're also, you know, you never want to count your chickens before you hatch. You never want to count your chickens before they hatch. But this is an opponent in Monrovia who Cascade should beat without a whole lot of trouble. And, you know, certainly it's a game where, you know, and, and at a period in a season in which you can afford to juggle things up, shake things up a little bit and see how it works. And obviously, you know, if it doesn't work, you can go back to uh, you, know, you can go back to what you did before, or try something new. But I, I like this move, especially of putting Trinity Hostetler in there. She's five eleven, so she and Walker up front, you know, make a nice twin towers combination. And um, none, and all, all of and and they're uh, um, and especially that that helps with um. Monrovia having a 6-1 um, center tonight with uh, Bree Tharp, who has not uh, scored very well this season, but who does average 2.1 blocks a game and is a strong inside presence. So now at the tip here, and it is controlled by the Lady Cadets. So now um, a three-pointer right off the bat, and she hits it. Olivia Bryant uh, puts the Lady Cadets up 3-0 here in the first seconds of the game. I think that's the fastest that... Uh, Cascade has scored all season, and she goes uh, for the steal as well, but they got her for a foul. So, Olivia Bryant trying to get the explanation, trying to put an exclamation point, uh, gets her first foul of the game. So now, we've got uh, Bree Tharp with, with the ball. She's the tallest player in the game at 6-1. She's a, a very good shot blocker, and pro pro probably the reason why... Um, We've got Trinity Hostetler in the starting lineup tonight. She and Walker should be, you know, be a good way to counter um, the presence of Tharp. Now a missed jump shot there, picked up by Bryant, throws down court, and that's a layup. And Michaela Collier with her first points of the game, and it's 5-0, Cascade uh, leading. Nice, so, nice 5-0 start here, Leck, and it's on the backs of some good defense. Yes, definitely. So now a rebound, though, uh, and now a... Who, that was uh, Tharp, who, who um, the six-one senior for Monrovia, who uh, put it off the glass, but uh, still missed. So, a little over a minute into the game, Cascade with the ball and a five-nothing lead. We had a three-point uh, field goal by Olivia Bryant on the first play of the game, and then a uh, layup there by Collier. So now, uh, an attempted alley oop uh, fails and uh, intercepted by Tharp, who tries to take it all the way down herself. Shows some good ball handling skills for her size. And we got now a jump ball here, and the possession arrow favors Monrovia. Yeah, it's a nice job by the cadets getting down on the floor that time, able to tie it up, and the Bulldogs will get the ball with the alternating possession. Yes, that's correct. So now inside to Tharp, and she dribbles, and I, she, uh, I think, dribbled it on the line. I couldn't tell from my vantage point. Where we are um, here in this broadcast area, we cannot see the uh, near baseline, so... We just have to trust the officials' uh, judgment. So now Olivia Bryant brings it down court. Um, now it throws across court back to Bryant, who mishandles it, and we got a, a backcourt violation there. So a couple of turnovers. I'll tell you, you take away these early tu turnovers, and the Lady Cadets could be up by maybe seven or nine now. As it is, they're still up 5 nothing. a minute 40 into this game here at Clayton. Uh, it's the seventh consecutive game, uh, seventh consecutive home game for the Lady Cadets, but their last for an even month. So uh, hopefully they'll get a win and you know um, begin this long road trip. Of course, a lot of the time th they go they go through a period of 16 or 70 days without a game during you know Christmas and uh, New Year break. And now we got a rebound there by uh, Walker, and now a three pointer there by Lexi Gross, wide open, no good off the rim. Uh, but Cascade controls the rebound, threatens to take another three. Pitches out to Bryant, though, uh, who dribbles around near uh, midcourt. Now uh, over to Collier. And uh, Collier passes over to Gross. 
So Gross making uh, her, her second consecutive start. She's been a spark plug, you know, uh, as of late and really earned this uh, trip into the starting lineup. So now into Bailey Walker, now over to Hostetler. Off the glass, no good. Uh, Walker gets the rebound, though. Back out to Gross, now to Bryant. Now to Collier. And now we've got, uh, they called her for traveling. Yeah, dragging that pivot foot as she was heading towards the hole there, Luck. Yeah, so uh, nevertheless, uh, not a, you know, disappointing that they came in with no points, but still not a bad possession by Cascade. They did, they, you know, moved the ball well, um, got an offensive rebound, and, you know, really showed a lot of good teamwork there. So now Monrovia trying to get the first points, and we got the ball stripped now, uh, and now, but now it's stolen on the uh, outlet pass, and uh, we got a foul there. I think they're going to get um, Gross on the reach in. So 4.56 to go. That's the uh, second foul of the game against, um, and the first against Gross. So throwing in uh, from under the basket. Tharp now with the ball. And now three-pointer, no good off the mark. And rebounded by Olivia Bryant, who brings it up. Um, and it pulls it back out past the three-point line, still dribbling. Takes it over to the other side of the court. And now a three-pointer by Gross from the corner, and she hits it. So Lexi Gross with her uh, first points, and it's 8 nothing, less than just three and a half minutes into this game. And now a near – yeah, Cascade does get a steal there. And now uh, th throws down to Gross inside to Walker, who lays it up and in. So 10-0 um, lead, and we, that's a, a timeout there by Monrovia. So less than halfway through this first quarter, your Cascade Lady Cadets show why they're ranked number six in the state. They lead the visiting Monrovia Bulldogs by a score of 10 0 here on AudioSportsOnline.com. And you know, making this even more encouraging is that um, the 10 points come from uh, four different players. So uh, it doesn't even take half the quarter for four of the five starters to score. We have a three pointer uh, each by Gross and Olivia Bryant, and then a two pointer each by Collier. And Walker, yeah, and, and you know, like that's really key. Not for maybe a game like this, but games down the road where you're going to need seven, eight, nine players to participate against uh, some of these ranked teams, especially as we get towards the tournament and get everybody involved. Yeah, yeah, that, that's right. And you know, one problem that a lot of these smaller schools have, even the ones with very good records, like Cascade does. You know, the eight and two record obviously speaks for itself. You still often have a problem with depth because you, with with the small student populations, even if you have two or three really good players, sometimes you have to fill them out with a, a lot of. You have to fill out the roster with a lot of players who would not be playing varsity ball with a, a whole lot of schools, and that can be a very difficult obstacle to overcome when you're playing uh, a, a good defensive team who knows how to contain your top two or three scores. So now, bringing it up for uh, Monrovia, you got uh, Ali Grimes here. She gives it over to Madison Payne who takes it all the way herself off the glass, no good. Um, Tharp off the rebound, no good. And now uh, um, Olivia Bryant will bring it up for, I'm sorry, that's uh, Bailey Walker will bring it up. Now gives it up to Lexi Gross, mishandled, and uh, Monrovia comes away with it, uh, still looking for their first points of the game. And now a uh, uh, baseline jump shot wide open, no good. Uh, Walker got the rebound. And she brings it up herself, gives it up to Lexi Gross now across the court. It's stolen, though, by Madison Payne. She's got one, uh, and she's fouled there uh, on the way to the basket by Walker. So that's Walker's first foul of the game. Uh, three fouls now against Cascade, none against Monrovia. Now, Madison Payne is a freshman, 5'5", and uh, has very good speed. She averages 5.1 um, points a game as well as 1.6 steals One and now uh, inbounds to Payne throws over to um, to Swafford the team's leading scorer the only, um, Michaela Swafford is, is the only double figure scorer for Monrovia she averages 10.2 a game and now uh, Whitney with the ball over to Payne back to uh, Swafford there she throws uh, now a, a near steal there by Gross. Throw inside to, um, and now we got a three-pointer there. Banked in by um, by Kayla Wilkerson, and that is uh, the first points of the game by Monrovia. And now on the other end of the court, uh, banked uh, shot no good there. And fight for the uh, 
And we got a um, jump ball possession arrow favors Cascade. So the first points for the um, the first points for Monrovia come off the bench with a three-point field goal banked in by Kayla Wilkerson. She's a 5'7 junior. And now a three-pointer uh, up and in there for Cascade. That's Michaela Collier. Uh, she leads the way with five points now for, and now we got a uh, travel there uh, by Madison Payne. She tripped, and so a 10-point lead now for Cascade and the ball. Off to an excellent start here. This is a game that Cascade should have been, you know, if, if they took betting on high school games, Cascade probably would have been somewhere in the neighborhood of a 25-point favorite in this one. They commit a, a turnover there. And I'll tell you, um, the one concern, uh, that that's at least three turnovers that Cascade has committed here. And even with a 10-point lead against an opponent, you should be you still want to play fundamentally strong ball. And we got a steal there, though. Uh, drive to the basket, no good. Uh, and now we got a foul there on the putback. So Cascade will be going to the line. That's the first foul of the game against Monrovia. Yeah, and, you know, again, Cascade, I'm sure, going to work on some things tonight, especially if they continue to expand this lead, which is now at 10, and they're going to try to make it more than that here with these free throws. You get uh, in and out, no good on that first free throw. But you, you want to really try to start working on some things, get some other people some, some action, and it gives you an opportunity really to kind of rest your starters. Indeed, it does, yes. So, um, especially because, you know, they have, you know, back-to-back games this weekend on the road Friday and Saturday night. So, 11-point lead now for the Lady Cadets. That was Amelia Bryant there, by the way, on the uh, free throw, her first point of the game. So, five different Lady Cadets have scored less than six minutes into the game now. And now it's steal, and now we've got a, a jump ball. Possession arrow favors Monrovia. It's already the third jump ball of the game. It's going to be inbounded there by uh, Alicia Whitney. She's a 5'8 senior. She averages 7.4 points a game, the third best on the team. And now got a the loose ball here. It's picked up by uh, by Paul. I'm sorry, by yes, yeah, Swafford, excuse me. And we got another, um, I believe they called a jump ball again, this time the possession arrow favoring Cascade, who has the ball now with a 11-point lead, 14-3, 159 to go here in the first quarter at Clayton. Uh, looks like this will be the second consecutive victory for the Lady Cadets. In their last game, they um, easily beat Edgewood on Friday night uh, by 46-22, to 22, a, a game that they, and a, a three-pointer now uh, in and out there. Rebound is uh, pitched back out and then uh, we got a, a whistle there. Not sure what the call was, but uh, Cascade, excuse me, Monrovia in bounds now. Monrovia wearing the uh, dark green jerseys with uh, white letters. And now I've uh, got a foul there. Um, it was thrown down court to Lindsey Keene, who's uh, one of three seniors on this Cascade, on this Monrovia team. She's a 5 4 senior. And now throwing it in, um, a three-pointer, no good. Rebounded there by Cascade. Nice behind-the-back dribble. And it throws over to a wide-open, uh, and it's no good for three. Rebounded by Madison Payne, who brings it up. Tries to take it coast-to-coast herself, but then pulls back out. Gives it up. To, and now a three-pointer there by Swafford. No good. Out of bounds to uh, Cascade. Monrovia, like I said, won a sectional championship two of the last three seasons, but this year um, they, they have a relatively young team, and like I said, they start a sophomore and as well. In fact, the leading scorer is a sophomore, and that's a three-pointer there by by Michaela Collier, who's played very well the last few games, especially with Bailey Walker not putting in as many points as she did you know, um, early in the season. So Collier leads all scorers with eight, and it's an ele- it's a uh, 17 to three lead now by Cascade here in the first quarter. I thought Cascade would win the game. I did not think they would lead this much this early. Um, they've they made a couple of um, turnovers, uh, but other than that, they've played nearly perfectly. The main thing that you want to see if if you're um, 
head coach David Carpenter. And we got another steal there by Cascade. Uh, on fast break, lay it up and in. So now, um, and now a steal there, and she tries to take it all the way. Hannah Rasnick again. So after getting uh, two po- uh, her first points of the game off the bench on the last tr- uh, trip down court, Rasnick steals uh, the ball in the ensuing possession and gets fouled. So uh, six uh, in the first quarter, six Lady Cadets have already scored. That is a very good sign. And now Resnick goes to the line for two more. The first one is up, and it is good. So 20-3, to three, your score. 22.4 seconds to go here in the first quarter at Clayton. Yeah, and you know, Lex, sometimes it's just nice to get easy wins, you know? <laughs> yes, yes. And, you know, we've had some real barn burners lately. Of course, that overtime thriller a week ago tonight as Resnick makes it two for two there. 18-point lead already. Um, and now the ball knocked loose. Gross, uh, excuse me. Uh, and now pitch down court, and uh, Walker with the ball at the top of the key pitches over t- to Gross. And now we've got to travel there. So six point three seconds to go. But yeah, you know, um, last Friday's after after the overtime thriller last uh, last Tuesday, which unfortunately was a loss. And I hold that thought till after this play, but it inbounds to Grimes, who brings it up four seconds. Not showing as much urgency as she probably should. Now throws uh, now, uh, at the buzzer, three-pointer, no good there by Kayla Wilkerson. So, the end of one quarter here at Cascade. Not much is not going right for your Cascade Lady Cadets. They lead the Monrovia Bulldogs by a score of 21-3 to here on, Radio, here on AudioSportsOnline.com. My name is Lex Zorn, joined by Rob Kindle. Um, other than about three turnovers, there really wasn't much that did not go right for Cascade there in that first quarter. A uh, breakdown, Michaela Collier led the way with eight points, followed by Hannah Rasnake with four, Lexi Gross with three, Olivia Bryant with three, Bailey Walker with two, and Amelia Bryant with one. And the scoring recap is extremely easy for Monrovia. Uh, Kayla Wilkerson with three, and that is all the scoring to report for the Lady Bulldogs. So um, if, it go, if it went like this for four quarters, your final score would be Cascade 84, Monrovia 12. Unlikely that, you know, um, they'll keep their foot on the accelerator that long, but nevertheless, the Lady Cadets um, look like they're off to their second big win in a row after last Friday's 46-22 triumph over Edgewood uh, in the first half of that boys-girls doubleheader. Um, so certainly um, a lot to uh, look forward to uh, for the rest. Of, and now um, on the, now back to action here. And we got a uh, relentless defense and a steal there uh, two, uh, on one fast break. But the uh, pass down court is a little too hard, and it goes out of bounds to Monrovia with 7.48 to go here in the second quarter. 21-3, to three, Cascade leading. Monrovia played a you know, much weaker schedule. Nevertheless, you know, a 6-6 six and six team. So, you know, they have some decent wins on the season. So now a three-pointer from the corner is up and good by Lindsey Keene. That's her first points of the game. Ironically, all six Monrovia points coming off the bench now, a three-point field goal each by Wilkerson and by Keene. Now the ball now knocked out of bounds there to Monrovia. Um they need uh, to get something going very quickly if they're going to have any chance to come back here. And now a shot fake there and a travel there by uh, Courtney Palmer, a 5'10 senior for, for Monrovia. And so now uh, Bryant uh, brings it up and now um, pitches cross court to Walker, fakes the three, then pitches inside over to Michaela Collier who puts up a three, no good. Um, and now a rebound there, uh, controlled by Monrovia. And so now uh, Riley Sears has it, gives it up to um, to Wilkerson, a missed three-point field goal. And now a pitch down field, uh, down field, down court, excuse me. And we got a foul there on the layup attempt there. And let's see who that is. So that's... Uh, Trinity Hostetler, who came alive a week ago tonight in that Cardinal Ritter loss, scoring six points um, 
in that game after scoring only two um, all season prior to that, and she hits her first here. So Trinity Hostetler uh, scores her first point of the game, so now not only have all five starters scored for Cascade tonight, but seven uh, Cascade players overall have scored just uh, not even 10 minutes into this game. Second free throw by Hostetler is up and no good off the back of the rim. But uh, the Lady Cadets get the rebound, and now we got a whistle. Uh, I think they're saying that she stepped on the line, so it will be Monrovia ball. So they uh, barely, they, and now another steal. We've had a lot of steals already for Cascade. Excuse me. Um, and now we got a struggle for the loose ball. It's going to be a jump ball. Possession arrow favoring a Cascade. So they will have the ball and a 16-point lead here with 6.23 to go in the second quarter here at Clayton. Coming at you live on audiosportsonline.com. So now uh, throw in uh, to Olivia Bryant. Jumper, no good. And we got a foul here. I think it was on the rebound. It's going to be against um, on. It's going to be against Cascade. That's going to be on Laura Batts, uh, five four senior. That's her first team sixth. And now uh, nearly another steal, but uh, and now and it uh, the ball fell onto the line there as uh, Lindsey Keene was trying to uh, get control of it. So Cascade takes over with a 16-point lead, 22-6, 6-7 to go here in the second quarter. Cascade playing their seventh consecutive home game, but their last for a month. Their next six games will be either on the road or at a neutral court before they return. And now... Um, Faked on the three-pointer now across court there. Now over to uh, Olivia Bryant who drives in. Left-handed floater, and they got her for a travel. So the uh, offense cooling down for Cascade, just, you know, in the first couple of minutes here of the second quarter. They've only scored one point so far. And now it's another steal there. Got uh, should be an easy layup there by uh, Walker. And it is. So Bailey Walker uh, with four points now, and the Lady Bulldogs take another timeout with 5.32 here to go in the second quarter. Your score, Cascade 24, Monrovia 6. Uh, Cascade enters the game with a record of 8-2. They are ranked number six in the state in Class 2A. They've been ranked as high as five this season. Fell down one position uh, with last week's tough but understandable loss to Class 3A Cardinal Ritter, a two-point loss in overtime. Um... And on a heartbreaking uh, ending with uh, Mia Keener hitting a driving layup as time expired to win it for the Lady Raiders. So Monrovia um, trying to keep this one from getting out of reach. That's very close to being out of reach already. But they, you know, they both of their um, field goals have been three-pointers. They dropped two or three you know, in a row, then... They could get within striking distance. But, you know, there's relentless defense. They're double teaming now. And now uh, Bailey Walker gets it, th- uh, throws it up for the uh, the layup uh, attempt. No good, but the Cascade controls the rebound. And now a three-pointer wide open off the rim. No good. And we got a foul there. It's going to be against, uh, against Cascade. So uh, the, the Lady uh, Bulldogs will take over. They've actually... It, actually played even this quarter it's uh, after Cascade had a 21-3 margin at the end of the first quarter the margin here in the uh, almost first three minutes of the second quarter has been an even 3-3 three to three. so now we've got uh, now uh, Monrovia in the penalty so the free throw is up and it is no good front end of the one and one no good so now Rasnake will bring it up for the Lady Cadets. Pitches over to Bailey Walker at the top of the key. Gives it back to uh, Olivia Bryant here. Hannah Rasnake now with the ball at the right perimeter. Throws it over to the right corner. Now back to Rasnake. Now over to Olivia Bryant. To, uh, to Walker now. 
And now a three-pointer by Bailey Walker from the corner, no good, and it's knocked out of bounds to Monrovia. So Cascade shooting has gone cold here in the second quarter, but they're still playing relentless defense, and that's kept the Lady Bulldogs from cutting into the lead. Monrovia has a fine athletic program. They actually uh, won the Monrovia won the Class 2A state championship in football last year, got to the semi-state this year. So now on the other end, uh, bank shot is up and good by Alicia Whitney. Um, her first points of the game. That then those were the first points by a uh, by a Monrovia starter in this game. Scores now 24-8. Cascade still with a big lead here. That was also the first two-point field goal by Monrovia tonight. So now Olivia Bryant over to Hannah Rasnake. Back to Bryant. Now back over to uh, Walker. Back to uh, Bryant. Now over to the top of the key, over to Rasnake. Now, uh, and now a near steal there, but uh, they find, uh, and now they draw the foul there. So a Cascade will be going to the line. So that's going to be uh, Bailey Walker there, the team's leading scorer on the season, averaging, uh, averaging 15.1 a game coming in, has a four tonight. Misses the first. Michaela Collier now coming back into the game for Cascade. Olivia Bryant sitting down. No, I'm sorry, Trinity Hostetler sitting down, excuse me, as Walker hits the second one. So 25-8, your score. Um, Monrovia got massacred in the first half. Now we got a near steal there, but uh, Monrovia maintains control there. Um, Lindsey Keene with the ball. And now uh, the, the, Bailey Walker steals it. She's trying to take it all the way in herself, and she does. Walker with seven now. So 27-8, to eight, your score. Like I said, Monrovia got massacred the first half, but they've played relatively even here in uh, – I'm sorry, you got massacred in the first quarter. They've, and now uh, another steal there. I'll tell you, Monrovia's, uh, I think, just getting a, a little frantic, and they are not – taking good care of the basketball. They're making a lot of desperate passes rather than playing methodically and trying to chip back into the uh, lead. I mean, I, I would bet that probably Cascade has seven or eight steals already, maybe even ten. Uh, you know, in that Cascade press, it can't be underscored, Luck. It is very tough for a lot of teams to break, and it's for some turnovers here tonight. Yeah, yeah, it, do, it does. And Cascade, they're a good shooting team, but they're not a great shooting team. So one, one thing that helps them a lot is they are, are able to create a lot of easy baskets with their relentless defense. And now a three-pointer uh, up and no good. And now a rebound put up, uh, no good this time. Um, Monrovia gets the rebound. Uh, that's Alicia Whitney who gets it. And so now uh, Whitney brings it up. And nearly stolen there, but um, Allie Grimes comes up with it. Now inside to um, Kay- to Riley Sears, no good on the bank shot. And on the other end of the court, uh, and she dribbles on the line. As a pass there by Bailey Walker, she tried to feed Collier under the basket, and uh, Collier ended up s- s- either stepping or dribbling on the line. So 27 to 8, your score, 230, th- 2.35 to go here in the second quarter. A very low, very low scoring second quarter. Um, what is it about second quarter starting the JV game? Um, this, this, it was a two-two, and now a really long. That's an NBA three there. Uh, no good there by Lindsey Keen. Uh, Monrovia controls the rebound, throws over to uh, I know a bank shot up and good there by Riley Sears with her first points of the game, cutting the lead 27-10. But. Uh, um, Amelia Bryant answering on the other end. And now the ball knocked out of bounds to Monrovia. So 29 to 10, your score. And now we got a timeout here. So uh, 156 to go here in the second quarter at Clayton. Your Cascade Cadets looks like they're on their way to uh, upping the record to 9-2, and two, getting their second consecutive victory on the season and uh, finishing this homestand, seven-game home, seven homestand with a record of 5-2 and two before they go on the road for their next six games. Three on, well, three on the road, then three at Plainfield in the Hendricks County Tournament. So um, certainly uh, 
if they keep this up, they'll have a good chance to move up in the rankings. They uh, moved back. They moved down a notch this week from five to six. Um, and of course, once the tournament starts, the rankings go out the window. But nevertheless, it's always nice to get that recognition and be in the top ten. Very good for the program, and obviously something that the community here really gets into. We got, you know, um, we've had. A great enthusiasm all year, and now we've got another steal there by Cascade, and they lay it up and in. So that's uh, Hannah Rasnake now. She has uh, six points on the game off the bench. So And now another steal there. Uh, pitch it up to Rasnake, who uh, this time has fouled in the act of shooting. So uh, this game really slipping away from the Lady Bulldogs. They played a little better here in the second half, but they, you know, looks like they're it looks like they're not going to be any match for uh, for Cascade. This is only the second time in 11 games this season that Cascade has played somebody in their own class. As Resnick hits the first one, she has seven now. It's a 22 cast 22 point Cascade lead. Now. Um, Courtney Palmer coming into the game for Monrovia. Bree Sharp sitting down as Resnick tries to go two for two at the line. It is up and good. So Hannah Resnick uh, with a game high tying eight points. Collier also has eight. Bailey Walker close behind with seven. And then um, three other Lady Cadets have three apiece. So a very, very, very balanced scoring attack there, which, of course, you always like to see. And now a uh, uh, nice move, nice reverse layup. Good there by Kayla, by, by, excuse me, by Alicia Whitney. So she leads Monrovia with four now. And now a uh, block there uh, on the shot by Collier. And now a three-pointer there by uh, Keene. She drains it. So Keene now with six points to lead Monrovia. And uh, the Lady Bulldogs showing about their best offense uh, that they have all night. They've actually scored 12 points in the quarter after only three in the first one. 40, 45 seconds to go now here in the second quarter. Uh, turnaround jumper no good there. Uh, Monrovia controls the rebound. Uh, brought down there and uh, drive to the basket, but it's knocked away. And now we've got a foul there. It was knocked into the hands of Kayla Wilkerson, and they're going to get um, Cascade for a foul there. So Wilkerson going to the line now. I'll tell you, Cascade... Despite the lead, they have not shot real well. Most of their outside shots have missed, but they, they've gotten so many steals, they've created a lot of easy layups. And so now, um, as she misses the front end of the one-on-one, -on -one, and the foul, by the way, was on um, Collier. And drives to the basket. Olivia Dr Bryant drives to the basket. No good. Monrovia with the rebound. Uh, stolen, though. On, uh, it was an attempted steal. And they're going to get her for the foul there. That's going to be on Amelia Bryant. 33-15 Cascade leads. And uh, Michaela Swafford going to the line. She's the team's leading scorer on the season, 10.2 a game. The only double-figure scorer on the season for the Lady Bulldogs. And now Riley Sears um, coming into the game for Courtney Palmer. Sears, a 5'8 junior. Swafford, uh, only a sophomore, but leading the team in scoring. She gets the first into the one-on-one. -on -one. That's her first point of the game. She's really been you know, taken out of the offense tonight, uh, prior to you know, prior, prior to now, of course. And her second one is up, and it is good. So 33-17, your score, 15.6 seconds to go. And now Rasnick coming in for Lexi Gross. Olivia Bryant brings it up for the Lady Cadets. 16-point lead. Uh, probably going to hold for the last shot of the half. A three-pointer now. Uh, oh, sorry. It was a two-pointer just inside the line. And they fouled her. It's going to be on Sears. That's her second. Team seventh. So Michaela Collier 
uh, stepping to the free throw line for the uh, Lady Cadets and a 16-point lead. 6.5 seconds to go here in the first half at Clayton. Puts it up. She hits it. So Collier now with the game high nine. Now uh, Madison Payne coming back in and Kayla Wilkerson sitting down for Monrovia. And Collier uh, puts up the second one and it's good. She's the first double figure scorer of the game. So uh, Monrovia with one more chance in the half. Um, Swafford brings it up, puts up a long three, but it's blocked and that is it. So after one half of play here at Clayton, your Cascade Cadets look like they're on their way to their ninth victory of the season. They lead the visiting Monrovia Bulldogs by a score of 35 to 17 here on audiosportsonline.com. All right, Lec, let's go ahead and thank some of the great people that make it possible for us to be out here tonight. And we start with Methodist, uh, with uh, Hendricks Regional Health, the sports medicine partner, Hendricks Regional Health, the sports medicine partner of the Cascade Cadets. Also want to thank the Diamond and Platinum partners, including Diamond Partner, Best Way Drywall, Inc., Diamond Partner, North Salem State Bank, Platinum Partner, AIC Irrigation, and Platinum Partner, CJ's Pizza. We also want to thank Scott Stevens, the Outstanding Athletic Director out here at the Cascade High School, as well as John Acton, the Outstanding Principal of the Cascade High School. 35 to 17 is our score. We're at the half here on audiosportsonline.com. I'm Rob Kendall. Thanks for being with us tonight as your cadets, Lady Cadets, lead the Bulldogs of Monrovia. And uh, it was a first half that saw Cascade lead from the get-go, held their own the entire way. A little bit more even there in the second quarter, but uh, the cadets still on the high side of the scoreboard, and that's all that matters as they're doubling up plus one, the uh, Lady Bulldogs here tonight. Taking a look ahead, our next broadcast, boy, this seems weird to say, but it's going to be a week from tonight. Uh, boys taking on Greencastle right here. It'll be a 7.30 tip, and that'll be our last broadcast before the Christmas holiday and the winter break. And then we're back for the county basketball tournament boys and girls action we're going to cover all the cascade games in the winner's bracket so there's one or two ways you can check out those games you can listen you can watch them on audio sports online we're gonna have the video cast for you or you can listen to them on the internet i'm sorry on the radio station at 98.9 fm wyrz and that should be a very uh exciting simulcast like we're gonna be simulcasting yeah, it's, it's very exciting, and you know, um, if you've never attended the Hendricks County Tournament before, I hope you'll get down there to Plainfield, it's just about 15 minutes down the road here from Clayton, uh, just take uh, US-40 down to uh, Indiana 267 and you're right there, and you know, um, I've covered the Hendricks County Tournament a couple of times before, it, it, it is an awesome event, you know, you have um, all six teams from Hendricks County, Cascade, of course, followed by um, Avon, Brownsburg, Plainfield, Danville, and Tri-West. And because they're all teams in the same county and generally that know each other and mostly play each other during the regular season, they all want to beat each other in the worst way. You have um, really, um, I think, you know, two games every day or so. And you, you get a lot of bang for your buck. I think you can get an, an all-session ticket for a pretty low price. Or you just attend the days that, you know, you want to attend. So you're going to have, you know, games there, you know, um, several hours a day for five consecutive days from that Tuesday um, to Saturday, the first week of the new year, January 3rd to the 7th. What a great way to start your new year. Um, I, I'll tell you, I, 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 and I mean this, I, I'd rather go hang out there at Plainfield and see the Hendricks County Tournament for five days than I would have, you know, then I would sit in front of my TV and just watch all all those bowl games that you have in January. I mean, it's something that uh, it's it's such a great passionate event, and I love walking into the gyms and see the four different blocks of colors uh, of you know different of you know you have the fan groups from each school that they're sitting together, and it's uh, it reminds me of the old sectionals that they had here in Indiana. For those of us like me who are old enough to remember the single-class basketball days where 
the sectionals were strictly based on geography and everybody just wanted to win the sectional and be the kings of the neighborhood. That's, you know, the, the only difference, but you know, between this and the old sectionals is that the losers don't, you know, go home for the season. But other than that, it's it's the same you know, type of atmosphere, and and of course there would be, you know, Cascade. Because they're, you know, so far, they're, they're the furthest removed from Indianapolis from the metropolitan area here in Hendricks County, and they're the lowest class school. They're 2A. The other schools are all 3A or 4A. I think people tend to forget about Cascade, so how great it would be if they were to, Cascade were to go out there and, you know, upset some of the big boys and you know, prove that they're a darn good program too. And certainly this has been a banner year in Cascade history. You know, it could end up being the best collective boys-girls season with the girls now ranked number six here in Class 2A and the boys uh, looking like they have their best season in a long time. They're four and three. With little luck, they could be, you know, five and two or six and one. And they're, you know, showing a lot lot of promise. And the boys team, you know, probably be better next year, by the way, when um, Dalton DuBois is a senior. But anyway, we got uh, now just past the five-minute mark here in halftime. Let's look and see um, what happened there in the first half. Uh, Cascade really uh, seized control of the game there in the first quarter, and at the end of one, it was twenty-one to three. Second quarter, um, it was much more even. In fact, on the scoreboard, it was exactly even with the teams going in even fourteen to fourteen. Um, although Cascade, nevertheless. Uh, retained that commanding 18-point lead. And Cascade, they did not shoot particularly well from outside. They missed a lot. of Most of their outside shots did not fall, but they played outstanding, outstanding defense. Their full court press was was devastating. And furthermore, Monrovia started panicking amid all the um, intense defense started throwing a lot of uh, sloppy passes out of desperation that created just more turnovers and what the reason why Cascade leads so much is because they got so many easy baskets off of turnovers despite not shooting very well from outside so as long as Cascade just keeps on doing what they've been doing uh, they should be fine and cruise to an easy victory here today and the first quarter, they did, you know, get a little sloppy two or three times with their ball handling. But other than that, they've played. Overall, I'd say this was an A-minus performance by Cascade. Um, and, you know, um, even though Monrovia scored far more points in the second quarter, I think Cascade really actually did a better job in protecting the basketball for themselves. It just, you know, Monrovia just, just started to hit. So looking at the individual scoring Michaela Collier, first of all for Cascade, Michaela Collier leads the way and leads all scores with 10 points. Hannah Rasnick came off the bench to get eight. Bailey Walker with seven. And then uh, Lexi Gross has three. Olivia Bryant, three. Amelia Bryant, three. And Trinity Hostetler has one. For the Monrovia Bulldogs, Lindsey Keene uh, leads the way with six points, followed by Alicia Whitney with four. Kayla Wilkerson with three, Riley Sears with two, and Michaela Swafford with two. So now we got 2.30 to go here in the um, here in the half. We're still waiting for the teams to return to the warm up uh, for the second half. So usually when um, a team isn't back on court uh, at this stage in halftime, it means that the head coach had a lot to say. And I'm sure especially um, Monrovia's head coach, Kevin Rounds, who's in his first season with the team, uh, probably especially had a lot to say because really his team is a little bit overmatched. Cascade clearly is the more talented team. But Monrovia would not be down by 18 points if they had taken good care of the basketball, and they did not. They uh, committed... A lot of turnovers. I don't have the the turnover statistics in front of me, but I would say they committed probably 15 turnovers in the first half. And a lot of it was simply because they panicked and they allowed um, Cascade to dictate the tone of this game. They got, uh, Monrovia got very frantic with their ball handling, started looking desperate on some of their passes, uh, many of which ended up being stolen. So now um, uh, both teams now in the last 15 seconds have come out to the court. 
and we got the Cascade fight song going on. And so uh, yeah, Monrovia now down on the court uh, shooting warm-up shots. Cascade has gone straight to the bench. As we, you know, we got a minute left, we got the buzzer there for the one-minute warding. And I'll tell you, you know, uh, Rob mentioned earlier in the halftime show uh, his special thanks to the administration here at Cascade, and I, I second that. They have they have really rolled out the red carpet for us, shown us great appreciation, and um, we're, we're so uh, thankful and honored to have this opportunity to bring all these games to you. You know, maybe you live across the country or across the world and you have a grandson or, or a nephew or a niece who plays for one of the teams here at Cascade, and or, or maybe you live in this uh, community or just for whatever reason aren't able to get out to the gym tonight. In either case, we're delighted to have you with us, and we hope we do these exciting games justice, and we hope you'll stick with us for all season and hopefully many more beyond this and covering many Cascade victories and hopefully championships. You know, we'd love to be with Cascade for the first Cadets State Championship, and certainly... Uh, both uh, the boys and girls programs are on the rise. The girls programs have been consistent, w- consistently winning for a long time. The boys, not as much, but you know, it looks like they're uh, going to have their first winning season um, here in five years, and uh, should be better next year. Like I said, so anyway, back to action here. Um, Madison Payne brings it up for Monrovia as we start the second half. Cascade thirty-five, uh, Monrovia seventeen, and Payne. Throws over to uh, Lindsey Keene, back to Payne. They're on the right perimeter. Back to Keene, uh, thinks about a three, then pitches inside to Alicia Whitley, and the ball's knocked out of bounds to Monrovia. Still nice steal attempt there by Lexi Gross, who got uh, the start tonight. Uh, Lexi Gross, a 5'2 five, five senior, a relentless competitor. Um, very good, you know, very good defensively. So now uh, pitch in to, and uh, we got uh, p- uh Put up there by Alicia Whitney. She was fouled in the act of shooting, so she'll have a chance for a three-point play. Alicia Whitney um, now with six points. That Now she's now tied with Lindsey Keene for the team lead. So uh, Whitney puts it up. No good off the back of the rim. So a 35-19 Cascade. Your score 7-29 to go here in the third quarter at Clayton. So now uh, Olivia Bryant brings it up for the uh, Lady Cadets. Got uh, over to Bailey Walker back over to Lexi Gross. Now to uh, Michaela Collier. Uh, we got the starting five into the game now. Trendy Hostetler also in there. So now uh, Bailey Walker passes across court to Collier, fakes the three. Now dribbles, passes back out to Lexi Gross near the uh, midcourt line. Now over to Olivia Bryant, back to Bailey Walker, back to Bryant. Uh, now inside to uh, Collier, no good off the side of the backboard. Rebound there for Monrovia by uh, by Riley Sears. Now gives it. Uh, now Michaela Swafford has it over to Madison Payne, the freshman, the only freshman starter in this game for either team. Um, and now a three pointer from the corner up, uh, no good. Rebound there by Walker. Pitches it up to um, Olivia Bryant. Uh, three, a jump shot just inside the three-point lane. No good. Hostetler gets the rebound. Pitches it out to Bryant. Drives to the basket. Uh, puts it up underhanded and draws the foul. Yeah, so she'll go to the line and shoot two. Nice job attacking the rim that time. Yeah, very good you know, off the uh, pass there from Hostetler. So now Olivia Bryant going to the line for two. The foul on uh, Riley Sears. That's her third. So Bryant's first free throw is up, and it is good. She swishes it. Olivia Bryant with four points now, and it's a 17-point lead there for the Lady Cadets, ranked number six in the state here in Class 2A, having a banner season. So now uh, Olivia Bryant hits them both. She has five on the game. Madison Payne will bring it up for the uh, Lady Bulldogs who trail by 18 here early in the third quarter. Now a nice behind-the-back dribble to get it past the midcourt line there by uh, Swafford, who takes it all the way in. Uh, so that's a nice move there by Michaela Swafford. She's the team's leading scorer with 10.2 a game. Only has four tonight, though. 
and it's a 16-point lead by a Cascade. Now a Bailey Walker three-pointer from the corner, and she swishes it. So Bailey Walker with 10 now, tying for a game high along with Collier. And 40-21 to 21 now. And now uh, on the other end, Madison Payne over to Swafford, thinks about a three, then uh, pulls back out over to Madison Payne, pulls up a three, air ball. No good, rebounded by Tharp, and she double dribbles. So Cascade now takes the ball uh, with 536 to go in the, in the third quarter, and they're uh, clinging to a 19-point lead. I don't know if clinging to a 19-point lead is the right... Uh, no, they're probably uh, they're, uh, holding to it. I mean, uh, nevertheless, I don't think they're in much danger of losing it now. Although I do give uh, uh, Monrovia credit for hanging relatively even since that disastrous first quarter, but now a three-pointer. Uh, no good there, rebounded there by Alicia Whitney, who will bring it up herself. She's got a hole in the middle, and now, um, and now uh, she travels, though. So Cascade uh, now with the ball once again, and Monrovia continues to hurt itself very badly with turnovers. Most of them have been on bad passes but right there. Um, she was trying to take it to the hole and just uh, saw that she was covered and um, just didn't get rid of it and uh, took a couple of steps. So now a uh, three-pointer there from the corner, up and no good there. And Payne gets the rebound, takes, starts to take it all the way to herself, and she does. Nice move there by Madison Payne with her first points of the game. She averages 5.1 on the season. So the freshman gets her first points, and that cuts the lead to 17. 40-23 Cascade leads almost halfway through the third quarter here at Clayton. Seventh consecutive home game. And now they find uh, Bailey Walker in for the easy um, lay-in. So Bailey Walker now with the game-high 12. She averages 15. She's been held below her average in, I think, the last two games, but now on pace to get it tonight. And now uh, on the other end, um, it's a good job there as um, as Michaela as Swafford uh, feeds uh, Tharp for the easy um, points. That's Tharp's first points of the game, and that cuts the lead to 17, 42-25. Cascade led by 18 after one. Then the margin stayed the same in the second quarter. Now here in the third quarter, uh, Monrovia's trimmed one off the lead, but it's still a 17-point lead for the Lady Cadets, who are having an excellent season. Uh, they're eight and one, easily could eight and two, excuse me, could be nine and one. You know, they're one play away from winning that game against Cardinal Ritter. They lost in overtime by two points last week. Their only uh, loss by a big margin was understandable, uh, as they were playing a Martinsville, a Class 4A team, who has a Purdue recruit. Uh, Kayla Trailer, who averages 26 points uh, and I believe seven points and five assists. She has incredible numbers across the board. And uh, so certainly it, it was an excusable loss. So now um, 4 14 to go here in the third quarter. And Cascade. Uh, now give it uh, to Bailey Walker now over to. Um, Bryant now to, to, now inside to Bailey Walker. She puts it off the glass. No good. Gets her own rebound. No. And it, it's uh, controlled there by uh, Alicia Whitley, who brings it up herself, showing very good um, ball movement skills. And But she double dribbled. So, again, uh, Monrovia shooting itself in the foot all night with turnovers. And there's yet another one. So, Cascade looks like they are... Uh, I'm, it, would, it would take a major collapse to lose this game but at the same time you know you just want to see them still um still play hard the rest of the way and most importantly just play good fundamental basketball play and now that uh there's a one of the few bad passes tonight it's uh, stolen there by Allie Grimes she gives it to Michaela Swafford the team's leading scorer but only has four tonight gives it up to Madison Payne now back up to Swafford Keep in mind that uh, Swafford is only a sophomore and Payne a freshman. So those two provide a bright nucleus uh, for Monrovia basketball. So La Lady Bulldogs should be better over the next couple of years. And they're not bad now, 6-6 six and six coming into tonight. But just not much of a match for the Lady Cadets here. And now we got a timeout here with 3.12 to go here in the third quarter. And uh, Cascade, it's 30-second timeout with Cascade leading 42-25. We're coming at you live here from Clayton on audiosportsonline.com. My name is Lekazorn. I'm joined by Rob Kendall. 
And this is uh, the first season of Cascade Cadets basketball here on Audio Sports Online. We're pleased to be bringing you almost the entire home schedule for both the boys and girls basketball teams. And we're going to have a select number of uh, road and neutral site games as well. So it's uh, a great honor and pleasure to be bringing you these games wherever you are. And so, yeah, and you know, one of the things luck about this Cascade team is they're very deep. We talked about it earlier, and they've got a wide variety of players that can play big and can play small, can handle the ball, can shoot jump shots, and that's really going to make them a threat as the season goes along. Yeah, certainly, you know, early in the season, they didn't get a lot of contributions off the bench, but these last couple of games with Hostetler stepping up and gross, and now we got a uh, whistle here, but yeah, Hostetler's done some good things off the bench, as has Gross, and now that they've moved Rasnake off the bench, she's basically the sixth woman on this team, because she's come off the bench with eight points tonight, she averages 10.9 on the season, so they have a lot of weapons they can hit you with, so I would say they're probably deeper than probably 90 plus percent of the Class 2A teams in the state, you know, a lot of times, you know, Cascade's a school of under 500 students, a lot of times when you have a, a student population that's small, you have a, a problem where – you have a real problem with depth. You might have two or three really good players, and then you have to fill out the roster with a lot of players who aren't varsity caliber. But Cascade, they're, they're, um, their depth has improved as the season has gone on, and I, I think you know it'll continue to improve. Um, as David Carpenter you know, seems to be doing a really good job developing talent. And now we've got a foul there on the uh, rebound there. But, yeah, certainly the program looks like it's in great hands with, with David Carpenter. And, you know, Cascade, though they do lose Bailey Walker and Michaela Collier next year, they also, um, on the other hand, they return Hannah Rasnake, they return Olivia Bryant, they return Amelia Bryant, all of whom have started for all or much of the season. There we got an th- air ball there on the three-pointer. But Cascade controls the rebound, gives it to Walker. Now, um fake on the three-pointer but it's knocked away and uh, we've got a, a foul on the loose ball with 2-11 to go here in the uh, third quarter I'll tell you you know where Rob and I sit we have a semi-obstructed view of the scoreboard because of all the banners and the uh, practice uh, baskets but we you know since the opening night here we've uh, learned to adjust it so we don't have to uh, move our heads quite as much we still have to do it a little bit but not as much as we did that first game where it was a real pain so now a uh, rebound there and well uh, they got a foul on the loose ball with 150 to 40 to go in third quarter cascade with a 17 point lead I'll tell you after the 18 point lead at the end of one I was really hopeful that cascade would really put it away by halftime and we had you know, ha- uh, be emptying the bench and getting the starters some rest by midway through the third quarter, especially since the girls have back-to-back games Friday and Saturday night, and it'd be great if we get them some extra rest. But nevertheless, um, they are, you know, apparently going to, you know, win this game without too much uh, trouble. And now Bailey Walker from the corner, pay- go over to Olivia Walker, back to Bailey Walker, three. Uh, I'm sorry, there's Olivia Bryant, excuse me. But now Alicia Whitney brings it up, and she tries to take it in herself, but loses control, then it gets control back, gives it up for a jump shot, no good. Uh, Cascade controls the rebound, throws down court to Bailey Walker, puts it up and in, and she's fouled. So Bailey Walker with uh, 14 now, a chance to make it 15, and the Lady Cadets with a 19-point lead, 120 to go here in the third quarter on audiosportsonline.com. Yeah, it's a really nice job by Cascade running the floor that time, beating the Bulldogs back as the Bulldogs had a lot of players up trying to grab that rebound and uh, results in Walker at the line with a chance to complete the three-point play. So Bailey Walker up, and she hits it. She has 15 now, just about her average. She averages uh, 15.1 on the season. And now, uh, and I'll tell you, you got to like the effort there. You had... Um, Rasnake and I believe that was uh, yeah Rasnake and Olivia Bryant still you know both trying to grab the ball out of the hands of the of the Monrovia player there on the inbounds pass you, you love that effort and now uh, she stepped on the line there on the inbounds pass so that's a turnover against Cascade one of relatively few they've made tonight so um, Monrovia takes over uh, down by 20 late here in the third quarter at Clayton and now a near steal again there. And now they might struggle to get past uh, the 10-second line. They, they do, though. And now uh, Kayla Wilkerson with the ball uh, gives it to uh, – and now uh, lay in there 
by Cartney Palmer. That's her first points of the game. And a whistle and a blocking foul that time as Walker was headed towards the hole. And you know, surprisingly, uh, Monrovia has actually scored eight. Eight Monrovia players have actually scored tonight. It's just they only have 27, so it's unusual when a team has that few points. They have that many players who've scored. So now uh, Bailey Walker uh, on the free throw line, she hits it. She has a game-high 16, so now she's ahead of her average. Her best scoring game, I think, in three or four games now. She's been uh, relatively contained in you know, a few of the games lately, but she hits them both there. She has 17 now. So that pushes the lead back up to 20 in the last minute now of the third quarter. And now a steal there on the inbounds pass. And uh, put it up, and no good. It's a nice effort, though. And now pitches down court to uh, Kayla Wilkerson. And now uh, Alicia Whitney, and she's fouled there while she was going for the jump shot. So 37.7 seconds to go, and it's a 20-point lead there by the uh, Lady Cadets here in the third quarter. And now Alicia Whitney will go to the free throw line. She has six points tied with uh, Lindsey Keene for the uh, team lead. First one is up and no good off the front of the rim. And now uh, Lexi Gross comes back in. And Bailey Walker sitting down, getting a well-deserved break. She leads the team. She leads the game with 17 points. I hear the, ch the crowd chanting something. You can't make out what it is. Whitney hits the free throw, so she has seven moving her into the team lead. And it's still a 19-point lead for Cascade. 35 seconds to go here in the third quarter at Clayton. So now Lexi Gross with the ball. Uh, and now over to uh, um, Olivia Bryant, back to Rasnake, back to Bryant, back to Rasnake. Now down to Collier, back out to uh, Rasnake, drives into the lane, puts up a floater, and she draws the foul. So Hannah Rasnake who has eight points off the bench, the leading uh, bench scorer for either team tonight, will go to the free throw line. Rasnick started for a lot of the season, still averages 10.9 points a game, third on the team, but now she's uh, the uh, effectively the sixth woman, the top offensive player off the bench. And now a uh, steal there, and Whitney takes it the length of the court, puts it up off the glass, no good. Uh, however, it's put back up and in there by Courtney Palmer, who has four quick points late in the third quarter. Two seconds, one, three-pointer at the buzzer, no good. So we head to the final quarter here at Clayton with your Lady uh, Cadets apparently on, the, on their way to their ninth victory of the season against only two losses. They lead the visiting Monrovia Lady Bulldogs by a score of 47-30 here on audiosportsonline.com. Yeah, nice job there by the uh, Lady Bulldogs there at the end of the quarter, able to uh, steal that ball, get down there. Didn't get the shot to go, but hustling to the rim to put the ball up and in. And uh, still a, a sizable lead here of 17 points for the uh, Lady Cadets, which is, I believe, like where we started the, uh, oh, the half. Oh, well, 18. So basically, you know, and I give Monrovia credit for this. They were down 21-3 to at the end of one quarter. Then it was, you know, so they had it was an 18-point first quarter deficit, but the deficit was only, it remained even for the second quarter, and it was 18 at the half. It was 35-17, and now here at the end of three, it's 47-30. to So in the second and third quarters, Monrovia has actually outscored Cascade by one, and keep in mind, it's not like Monrovia's been coming back on the Cascade um, starters. I mean, Cascade has kept their, they have not emptied the bench. They've kept their main players in there the whole game. So nice effort just to keep the game in, in the, you know, in some semblance of respectability for Monrovia with a game that looked like they were going to get absolutely run out of the gym. So now um, Madison Payne brings it up for the, uh, for the Lady Bulldogs. Pitches it over, now back to, to Payne. The 5'5 five five of sophomore, the 5'5 five five freshman, excuse me, handing it over to um, Lindsey Keene. Now back over to Payne, who uh, drives toward the basket. Now pitches back out for a three-pointer, and it's good. That was a swish. So Lindsey Keene with a, a, a team-high nine for the Lady Bulldogs, and it's a 14-point it's a uh, game, excuse me. So Monrovia not likely to come back, but they're not quite out of it. But now... Uh, Michaela Collier answers with a three of her own, pushing it back up to 17. Collier with 13 points now for Cascade. Now on the other end of the court. Uh, 
inside to uh, turn around. Uh, and now they uh, hit, and then it's no good there on the jump shot there by Riley Sears. Cascade gets the rebound. Seven minutes to go now in the game. Uh, Cascade has a 17-point lead, and it is tipped out of bounds to Cascade with 6.54 to go here in the fourth quarter at Clayton. My name is Lex Zorn, joined by Rob Kendall. You're listening to Cascade Cadets Basketball on Audio Sports Online. This is our first season bringing you Cascade Basketball. And now after a no-good three-pointer, um, Lindsey Keene will bring it up and now pitches up to Madison Payne for a wide open three, no good off the side of the rim Lexi Gross the rebound uh, it's double teamed and uh, it's, uh, it looks like it was, they're saying it was knocked out of bounds to, to Cascade 6.38 to go and counting here in the fourth quarter Cascade, barring a collapse, they will get out of here with their second consecutive victory and improve to 9-2 and in the season. And now we've got, an, on a steal attempt, Lexi Gross was fouled there by Riley Sears. I believe that's Sears' fourth. Yes, it is her fourth. And, that's all, and that puts the um, puts the Lady Cadets in the bonus. It's uh, So Lexi Gross is going to the free throw line now. She has uh, three points on the game, coming on a three-point field goal. She's 5'2", shortest player in the game, hits the first. Pushes the lead back up to 18, which which is where it was at the end of one and at the end of two. She grows uh, one of uh, four seniors on this uh, Lady Cadets team. She hits them both, so it's a 19-point lead. So a 5-0 run by Cascade since... Uh, Monrovia cut it to 14 to start off the quarter. And now a steal there by Gross. And she uh, uh, thought about taking the fast break but pulls it back out now. A three-pointer is good there by Michaela Collier. She has 16 now, one behind Walker for the team lead. And now uh, now Madison Payne takes it up as her team trails by a game-high 22. And now a a foul uh, as Riley Sears. She's fouled in the act of shooting going for a layup. So that's going to be on Bailey Walker. That's her fourth. A week ago tonight, she had four fouls and missed about half the game. That overtime loss to Cardinal Ritter. Tonight, Bailey Walker again has four fouls. But this time, uh, they're far, far, far less costly. And first free throw is up and good there by Riley Sears. Um, She has three now. So it's a a 21-point lead now. 6.08 to go. Here at Clayton, as Sears with her second free throw up and good. She uh, hit them both. She has four on the game now. So, Olivia Bryant brings it up over to Bailey Walker, back to Bryant. Now over to Collier. Over to uh, uh, Gross, uh, fakes the three. Now finds Walker on the other end of the court. Back over to Olivia Bryant inside to, uh, now a three-pointer there by Bailey Walker. No good off the side of the rim. Bryant gets the rebound, now pitches back out to Collier, puts up a jumper, and she hits it. Michaela Collier now with 18 points to lead all scores in this game, and it's a 22-point lead by Cascade, uh, 5.35 to go. And now a, 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 a ball stripped from Sears. However, uh, uh, it's uh, Collier lost uh, control of it, and it goes out of bounds to Monrovia with 5.25 to go. Uh, Cascade leading by 22 points. Now inside to Sears. Now over to um, and now back over to uh, Whitley. Hands off to uh, Madison Payne, the freshman. Now over to uh, uh, a jumper. There is up and good there by Alicia Whitney. She has uh, nine points, tied for Keen for the team lead. 57-37 now inside to Bailey Walker. No good on the uh, bank shot. And now uh, Madison Payne will bring it up. 4.34 to go. Looks like uh, not much that... Uh, and now um, thought about a three there. Gives it back to Payne, who takes it down the baseline, drives to the basket, but we got a whistle here. And it's going to be against Monrovia with four... With 4.43 to go. It's going to be on Sears, and she is out of the game now. So Riley Sears, um, the 5'8 junior for Monrovia, has become the first player of this game to foul out. 
she had four points. So now Olivia Bryant brings it up. Now um, inside to Hannah Rasnake, turnaround jumper, off the glass, no good. Rebound by Whitley, who uh, brings it up herself. Now pitches back to uh, Wilkerson and takes it over, a three-pointer there from the right perimeter. No good, rebound there by Walker. Pitches it up now to um, Collier, now down court to Olivia Bryant, misses the running layup. And now uh, we got a foul there against Cascade. And that's going to go against Amelia Bryant, who has, she's the 5'9 junior, started a lot of the season, came off the bench tonight, and she has four fouls now. So 4-14 to play here. Cascade uh, with a 20-point lead here over Monrovia. These two regional rivals, uh, they're they're separated by a mere 11 miles. And now Bailey Walker, excuse me, um, yeah, Bailey Walker sitting down giving a, um, slapping a a very aggressive five to everybody on the bench. Uh, Clearly feeling very happy about the way this has gone, this game has gone tonight as she should. Uh, very few mistakes made by Cascade. This has been a very solid, I would say, A minus performance. It's a couple of times they didn't protect the ball, but for the most part, they've executed very well. Outside shooting wasn't very good, but like I said, they created a lot of easy points by playing outstanding, outstanding defense. So now Olivia Bryant goes to the free throw line, 20 point lead. First free throw is up, and it is good. Olivia Bryant uh, has, has had a lot of great moments this season. She's a 5'6 junior, so they get her back for another year. And second free throw is up, and it is no good off the back of the rim. She has six on the game, averages 10.3 on the year. And now a three-pointer there by Madison Payne. No good off the side of the rim. And Cascade comes away with it under uh, four minutes to go now. And... Uh, now over to Olivia Bryant there. Now Monrovia, and it's a nice uh, steal attempt there, by, and, and Payton does come out with it, but they, they hit her from behind. So I think they're going to get a Michaela Collier for that foul there. Now we've got some substitution here for both teams. So now Olivia Bryant now sitting down for, and they said the foul, by the way, was on... Um, now we got a timeout here. So, okay, so Monrovia takes a full timeout with uh, 3.38 to go here in the um, fourth quarter here. Cascade apparently on their way to a victory. Looking ahead, um, like I said, our next broadcast, or like Rob said earlier, our next broadcast will be a week from tonight, a boys game between um, your cadets and the... Um, and Greencastle, and that will be our last broadcast here at Clayton until January 13th when we return uh, for a boys-girls doubleheader against Cloverdale, the Clovers, appropriately. (laughs) And not a name that exactly inspires toughness, but certainly an appropriate name for that school nevertheless. And then uh, after that, uh, also... also, um, the girls have back-to-back road games this week. Saturday, excuse me, Friday at Owen Valley. That should be a barn burner of a game because Owen Valley is a 3A team who enters the game at 11 and 0. And then Owen Valley, excuse me, South Putnam, a 7 and 3 team the next day. So, back-to-back road games this uh, Friday and Saturday. Hope you'll get out if you can. And now uh, Whitley with the ball takes it to the basket. Now pitches back out to Payne. Pitches over to uh, and now Payne with a three-pointer off the rim, no good. It's put back up and in there. I believe that was Tharp. No, it was Allie Grimes, excuse me, with her first points of the game. So amazingly, nine different Lady Bulldogs have scored now. And now we got a whistle here. But yeah, so uh, I, and I, I, I will confess, even as a lifelong Hoosier, I do not know where Owen Valley is. <laughs> so, But that's where, uh, and, and that's, by the way, that's a boys-girls doubleheader. So uh, you get uh, a lot of bang for your buck if you head out to Owen Valley this Friday, and then we got a girls' game then uh, Saturday. Uh, it's an afternoon game, 1.30 p.m. at South Putnam, which is just a few miles to the west of here. So, and now the uh, 
First free throw is up and no good. Second is... She hits the second, so... Yes, second one went down. So who, who was that on the line now? I could not tell. But anyway, 20-point um, lead, nevertheless, 59-39. And uh, now a, a near, well, near steal there. And uh, knocked out of bounds. That was a great effort there by Hannah Rasnake, who's played very well off the bench tonight. So 3-0-4 to go here. Madison Payne, a lot of promise for, you know. Um, and now a steal there. And takes it all the way to the basket. Now gives it up, and it's blocked there. So, uh, and I'm trying to read all the numbers here. It, it is it is tough. I, I, I haven't um, talked about it in this game, but the numbers are often very hard to decipher. I'm to the point now where the, the starters, I recognize their faces enough. So Collier hits another one. She has 19 now, game high. And it looks like we might see the benches empty now with a 21-point uh, lead there for Cascade with a 230, uh, 253 to go now. As uh, Collier hits both of them, she has a game-high 20. So 61-39, your score. Monrovia, did, you know, after the disastrous first quarter, they did a fairly good job in, you know, keeping the game from totally getting, you know, out of control. But nevertheless, they apparently will fall short tonight. So, uh, certainly, you know, uh, there have been a, a lot of good things. That was Laura Batts, by the way, who um, hit that free throw. I finally just saw her number. But, yeah, you have to really get your eyes uh, attuned to seeing these numbers here. But, anyway, uh, so cadet, uh, cadets take a 30-second timeout now. And... Certainly, you know, um, the, you know, I don't think there's such a thing as the perfect game. You know, no matter how well you can play, you can always nitpick and look back at things that you could have done differently. And there were maybe four or five passes that Cascades made in this game that, sh you know, um, they shouldn't have made. And maybe there's a couple of times where they sh settled for an outside jump shot when they should have taken it inside. But, you know, th they have uh, not made any major mistakes in this game. And, They've executed extremely well. They've played very hard the whole way. Um, they've, you know, uh, played the whole game. And now they've got a foul here. Uh, it looks like uh, they, there was an inadvertent trip uh, of bats by Kayla Wilkerson. Yeah, they're going to get Wilkerson for the foul. That will be her second. So bats will go to the free throw line. She hit one earlier. Yeah, her first one is up, and it is no good off the back of the rim. Hits her second one. So 62-39, your score here at Clayton. And it's been a, a lot of players for both teams have scored. Um, I believe we've had eight s scores from both teams. So now um, Kayla Wilkerson with the ball inside to Whitley. Now back, to, back out to Wilkerson, three-pointer, no good. And got a rebound. Uh, now uh, um, uh, Swafford came away with the rebound, pitches it over to Wilkerson, back over to Payne, puts it up, a, th a three, and she hits it. No, I'm sorry, that was Swafford, excuse me. So Swafford um, with seven points on the game now, the team's leading scorer on the season. Held a little before, below her average tonight with 1.40 to go. And it's a 20-point Cascade lead. And Cascade uh, calls a timeout when Monrovia was aggressively going for a steal. Full timeout by Cascade. So I'll tell you, you know, we've really... Uh, I'll tell you, after the kind of weather we had, you know, uh, when, the way the, um, the roads were so backed up and so um, slick... In downtown Indianapolis this morning, I was afraid this game was going to get canceled tonight. So I kept on, you know, waiting, you know, by the phone for the word that it would be canceled. But thankfully, it wasn't. And I don't know if the bad snow earlier today hurt the turnout here. 
We, we haven't had quite as many people here tonight as we have at some of our other games this season. Uh, probably a lot of that is that it's a Tuesday night as opposed to a Friday or Saturday. Well, obviously, we, you know, we normally get much bigger crowds on the weekends, but we still had a, a solid 150 or so, about 150 fans tonight, which is very good for a, a girls game on Tuesday night. Actually, it's pretty good for a boys game on Tuesday night. We had about 50 fans uh, from Monrovia who made the trip just 11 miles from here. And so now um, we've got, uh, looks like the benches are pretty well empty now. And this is the part of the game that you hate if you're a commentator because, you know, you have to glance down at your stat sheet a lot more because there's a lot of people you don't normally call. But uh, Batch now has the ball, pitches over, on, and now uh, back in to, uh, that was Katie Cleveland with her first points of the game. And uh, so, uh, of course, speaking of Cleveland, this has been quite a year for the city of Cleveland in sports with the, the Cavaliers winning the city's first pro sports championship in 52 years. And then the Indians getting all the way to the World Series where they lost to Rob's beloved Cubs. But yeah. the Browns are still awful. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they are. So uh, hopefully the, the uh, Cavs and the Indians have made up for it for uh, the uh, long-suffering sports fans of Cleveland. But anyway, uh, I was also glad that LeBron James' story had a happy ending after he originally burned his bridge with Cleveland and then came back and redeemed himself. So anyway, and I'll tell you, even after had he come back, even had he not won it, even after he came back, I think, and now with the field goal there, good by, um, who was that? Oh, by Abby Church with her first points of the game, under 30 seconds now. But I think had LeBron merely come back had he not won a championship, I don't think he would have ever had full forgiveness after winning the two in Miami, but not winning any in not winning any in Cleveland. So now that he's won in now that he's won in Cleveland, I think he's fully forgiven. But anyway, no good there on the three pointer there. For and now seven seconds left. It looks like the uh, Lady Cadets will run out the clock. They do. So your final score here tonight at Clayton, your Cascade Lady Cadets beat the visiting Monrovia Bulldogs uh, by a score of 66-42. Um, your final uh, totals for your Bulldogs, um, excuse me, for your Cadets. Michaela Collier led the way with 20, followed by Bailey Walker with 17. Um, Hannah Rasnick off the bench with 8. Olivia Bryant with 6. Lexi Gross with 5. Um, Amelia Bryant with 3. Lara Batts with 2. Katie Cleveland with 2. Abby Church with 2. Uh, and Trinity Hostetler with 1. For the Bulldogs, uh, Alicia Whitney with nine, Lindsey Keene with nine, um, Michaela Swafford with seven, Riley Sears with four, Courtney Palmer with four, Kayla Wilkerson with three, Bree Tharp with three, Alicia Grimes with two, or excuse me, Allie Grimes with two, and Madison Payne with two. Well, um, in closing, it was a game in which Cascade took immediate control. They led 21-3. to three at the end of one quarter um, amid a smothering defense. They forced a lot of turnovers. The rest of the way, the teams, two teams played about evenly. Although Cascade, they did not get complacent. They played hard the whole way. They played tough, relentless, aggressive defense the whole way. And, you know, uh, they they were playing an opponent, you know, um, that they should have beaten, you know, fairly handily, which they did. But the encouraging thing is that, you know, Unlike a lot of teams when they play overmatched op- opponents, they they didn't stop playing hard the whole way. They didn't play like they had it in the bag, you know. They, they played like it was a clinic. And they know they have tougher games ahead, including this Friday at Owen Valley, their, their next game at the road. Um, so, you know, certainly now they're right around the midway point of the season at 9-2. and two. Uh, Hard to believe that the end of next month we already start the uh, postseason. So hopefully that they will uh, be ready. We'd love to have a deep a tournament run here in our first season on AudioSportsOnline.com as the Lady Cadets will be going for their first sectional championship in 10 years. And um, before we sign off, I, I just want to say uh, one thing on a personal note. Tomorrow is my 46th birthday, and the older I get, the less I care about material gifts. And to me, you know... Being here tonight uh, covering an exciting high school basketball game in my home state, which has the greatest high school um, 
high school basketball tradition in the whole world. That's much better than a new sweater or a new tie. So uh, this was a great way to spend my birthday eve. And um, so, um, you know, uh, why not spend it doing one of the things I love to do the most in the world, which is watch sports and talk about it. So. Well, a happy early birthday to you, Lack. Oh, oh, thank you, thank you. (laughs) And uh, you did a great job calling the game tonight, as you always do. Oh, thank you. We will see you a week from tonight here at uh, the Cascade High School as the boys will take on Greencastle. The Lady Cadets are victorious tonight over the Monrovia Bulldogs for our play-by-play voice, Lex Zorn. I'm Rob Kendall saying have yourself a great evening. Good night.